Okay, uh, welcome Bernard to Nub TV. It's great Thank to you. have you on. And uh, really excited to be chatting about your new book. If you can just uh, give our viewers just a little pre of what you do uh, and, and about your new book, which is out now, I believe. Well, what I, what I do uh, currently is a lot of podcasts about my book. <laughs> as well as um, continue to see patients. I'm a psychiatrist, yeah. so I, I I love to do psychotherapy. So I have uh, some patients to do a psychotherapy. And I'm trying to figure out more about how meaningful coincidences work, and I'm particularly caught up right today in the relationship between fractals and meaningful coincidences, which you can ask me about, but I can't tell you. There's some relationship That's about a repeated patterns fractals are repeated patterns of self-similar but not the same usually and that's what i'm that's what i'm thinking about now i keep trying to push back the the envelope or the curtain really about uh, what how to explain meaningful coincidences and it's very important to recognize that one explanation is fun to have but there really isn't one. There are multiple explanations for meaningful coincidences that I try to get into in my book. Okay, so so what's the most common uh, type of meaningful coincidence? Uh, there, are there. Uh, that's, that's a question I wondered about, and thank you for asking. Uh, I I did uh, a survey called the Weird Coincidence Survey to try to answer that question and other questions related to. Uh, meaningful coincidences. My first, the reason to do the survey was, mm -hmm. you know, I hear a lot of stories, but let's have some numbers here. You know, let, um, um, I was chairman of a psychiatry department and I did a lot of like regular research. Mm -hmm. So I have this research bent, but I also have this weird bent out here where if you get to the end of the book, yeah. psychosphere is something I talk about, which is a potential explanation for, um, telepathy clairvoyance and things like that and more so i've bridged the the a, a wide range but not uh, all the way in either direction trying to figure it out so this word weird coincidence survey was like the beginning of the formal research i'd had a lot of experiences in my life okay. so i wanted to say well do other people have these things too i've heard about it but do they and we've did it at University of Missouri, Columbia, and a thousand people two different times. And we got a, this might not mean much to a lot of our viewers, but a valid and reliable scale, mm -hmm. which means it was stamped of approval by statisticians and psychologists. So it was the first one of those. Um, and it, it's on my, um, it, the scale can be taken. It's on my website, which is coincider.com, C-O-I-N. C-I-D-E-R, coin, coin cider is one way to look at it. Oh, yeah. And you can you can take the scale and see how sensitive to coincidences you are. But what we did was also come up with the most common ones, uh, that, uh, which is what you're asking about. And the most, the most common ones are about four of them. And one of them, I'll just tell you about happened yesterday. It's like that you think of something that you need or want, some information that you want. Sure, yeah something you need to know about and yeah. it's answered by media or other people yeah. without your asking so yeah. i was welcome back from the river. Myself, yeah. does that happen to you yeah it does quite a lot yeah hey okay if, we're playing baseball then if That's i'm good. in a certain frame of mind it happens more if i'm in a quite a negative down kind of depression type state then i don't get these things so do you find hey. that yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed, Mark. <laughs> yeah. Yes, to repeat it, when your mind is slowed down, you're not running a lot of thoughts, and it's thoughts matching the environment that make coincidences. So you don't have a lot of possibilities in your mind. It's very simple. Uh, mm -hmm. And I have a manic uh, interview per person with, who's mainly with manic depressive illness. He'll tell you more extremes than that. So that's one. Okay. But then you mentioned. You got to be in a in a current state of right state of mind. Mm -hmm. 
Can you describe the right state of mind that you might need to be in? Just where I feel kind of at ease with myself. Uh, you know, happy maybe, but uh, joyful, open to open to things happening, I think. Because when I've had them, I, I have more because I feel like I'm open to these experiences. Well, they're open. I'm noticing open. That open is 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 a word needs to be described it's we do doors and windows but when you have a person being open yeah what's that well, well i mean just being um, i'm when they happen i i kind of acknowledge it and i think that's the thing when i acknowledge it more happen whereas a lot of people might just dismiss it like oh, you know. well that's key that you're willing to acknowledge it which means you're willing to notice it yeah and and probably the simplest way to talk about what causes coincidences is being willing to see them. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, that's in my experience. That's, that's how I feel about it. But I just wondered what, where do these, where do these come from? What triggers well, the, the, Where do they come from? <laughs> <laughs> where do they come from <clears throat> yeah well we just started with where they come from in a very important way which is they come from your willingness the uh, our viewers willingness to acknowledge that they exist and might be worth paying attention to mm -hmm. that okay. that's one way of saying without that you're not going to have many coincidences there are plenty of them that happen like universal constants and even chlorophyll which is weird enough anyway how'd that happen right. uh, and, and it, there, that seemed to make it so we can live on this planet and there's a lot of debate about how that happened and um, that's yeah. another thing but we we are we living in a simulation is becoming more and more of a question as more virtual reality experiences uh, get out there in the people's world and wonder is there some are we are, are we somehow algorithmic involved or al other algorithmically involved in somebody else's computer game and in, in mm -hmm. a simulation so that's a kind of an interesting one yeah. the most common explanations are god or universe and random mm -hmm. and consciousness gets in there as a potential but one of the problems uh i really like to emphasize with your question about where they come from is and, and is that the individual person has something to do with them too so okay so this is kind of in my experience is is there a link between quantum physics and where where that's going in terms yeah, of yeah, consciousness yeah. kind of creating the reality that we see the the quantum physics and particularly non-locality which is yeah. really like a favorite thing out there um is to me a um a placeholder for what we don't know yeah uh, yeah absolutely yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. and and a lot of people think you say quantum physics or quantum field and you got an answer and it's not <laughs> that much better than god or universe or consciousness but it is a little better yeah uh, because what we're seeing now, especially on our show, is that people are explaining the paranormal with quantum physics, as using, like you're saying, that as an explanation, but still doesn't really explain it. It, it still it doesn't really explain it. <laughs> and uh, since we're doing par paranormal, and I hope a little music, and I'd like to be able to suggest yeah. to you that one of the places that I experienced lots of mm. paranormal kind of experiences, including interpersonal energy is okay. is is dance i go okay. to i go okay. to a uh, like ecstatic dance or five rhythms dance uh mm -hmm. and just man what happens on that dance floor is a microcosm of what could happen outside but in a slower way okay. uh, there's a telepathic and interpersonal energy things going on and other things going on pretty regularly but you got to be able to pay attention to them so, um, so you, what, what sort of dance is this sorry uh, it's uh called five rhythms or okay. um or ecstatic dance ecstatic or dance. or do whatever you feel like is the better way of describing it and what, and what sort of music are you dancing to whatever the the playlist person brings in 
okay. which is usually um, non-lyrical. Sometimes there are words to it. Right. Uh, and it often starts slowly, so you can kind of get okay. going with it a little bit and get moving. And then in the middle, it you get some drummy things going. Okay. And then towards the end, it gets kind of like slow and like, uh, then I get to twirl around and move around and dance. Oh, this sounds the... amazing. We need to do this on Knob TV. We have to do it. So thank you for that. that. I've never heard of it before. So that opens a lot more possibilities. It's uh, international. Is it? Okay. I need to check it out. So is this like kind of like getting into a shamanic trance sort of thing, would you say? Okay. Sort of thing. Yeah. I mean, and the way I say it being as I'm kind of primitive is I get I get, I become the music and the music becomes me. Oh, that's cool. I like that. Okay. And, okay. and getting into that space is something like a shamanic space, I'm guessing. Um, okay. And things happen with that. So you get telepathic things going on as well then? Yes. Wow. Okay. That sounds really, really cool. Because I think music is important. I have, I have a lot of synchronicities regarding music. I mean, I am a musician, but I'll be thinking about a certain certain song or certain band, then I'll hear them on the radio. I know it's, there could be like just probability that you're going to hear them. Well, 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 just pause for that, because mm -hmm. that's important. It is probability. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm trying to say is that probability is part of the description of a coincidence. Okay. But it's not the it's not the only explanation. Right, yeah. That's what needs to be and and mystery, which I prefer, is like I don't know. I'm in this business about coincidences because when I went to I went to Yale, I went to Stanford, these are famous schools supposed yeah. to teach you a lot. They didn't teach me something. I knew it. Well, they didn't okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. There was something missing. And so I've been out here with the coincidence thing after I finished being chairman, well, even while I was ending it, trying to use coincidence to figure out what's going on around here. And they are clues to our participation in reality. And one of the fundamental things is our minds are not so isolated from our environments as we are told. Mm. and coincidences between like you thinking of a song mm -hmm. and it shows up on the radio that's one of the second most common coincidences thinking yeah. of something and you hear it on the radio that that shows how your mind is more connected to what's around you with probability being involved with mm. mystery being involved but your mind has something to do with making it happen okay I mean, do you think we had, we were, we were, I say, open again, more open to this, you know, in our kind of, what's the word, primeval state as opposed to our civilized state? Is there any suggestion for that or is it? Uh, I, primeval <laughs> is uh, where we're going. Uh, what, yeah, okay. what, what we've done as humanity, uh, and we better do it or we're dead, is like... Uh, try to bring together our scientific thinking with uh, the yeah. aboriginal thinking of Australia, for example, or Maori, mm -hmm. the, to recognize that we are also a primitive culture mm -hmm. in, our, in ourselves, and they can tell us about who we are along with our science. And I represent one of the many people who are trying to put together enlightenment uh, restrictedness to like just the observable to with uh, a consciousness expansion of and of, of of indigenous cultures so that we can develop an integration of them because we need to be able to do that in order to save humanity from destroying itself well wow, that's quite profound yeah thank you for that you're welcome okay i mean i've read your biography it says you're the first psychiatrist to really study uh synchronicities meaningful coincidence since carl jung and I, I read his book, <laughs> Synchronicity, uh, and, you know, it was very interesting, but I, it kind of lost me halfway through uh, in terms of getting into science. It yeah. takes it takes perseverance and uh, several readings to yeah. understand what Jung was talking about. Uh, mm -hmm. He was a little nervous about publishing that. 
because he was afraid of the ridicule he was going to get Absolutely. for, yeah, for doing that. So he, it's, uh, it's, it's obscure. Uh, and that what my book is meaningful coincidences on there on the on my door there is the next step past what Jung might have done in trying to describe meaningful coincidences so i i'm i'm not a follower of jung mm -hmm. i'm i'm following jung i'm yeah, doing it after jung uh, <laughs> and because i have some new newer ideas than he does sure. uh, back then quantum mechanics quantum physics was like a, a placeholder but yeah. since this is a parapsychology um thing that we're doing here i wanted to get the music thing in yeah because okay. yeah. music and we talked about it but music is and dance i mean if you into synesthesia converting mm -hmm. one sense into another dance is synesthesia you convert the sound into body movements and yeah. it's so nice to get tuned in and then almost kind of watch my body do stuff wow, um, and i got to keep my i got to keep my eyes closed most of the time because uh, otherwise the vision like uh, science gets yeah. in the way of the experience <laughs> right yeah okay so you don't feel it you you visualize it okay well that's amazing yeah science is mostly about the visual thing but other things do uh, not so much about the other i mean does your concept of time also go when you're in that dance state does time change for you well i'm afraid you're gonna to have to hear time is on my side yes it is now <laughs> i mean i i think that was a band from england uh, that you may have heard of that did that song uh it's still <laughs> popping around in some form or another yeah. uh, a lot of people like to talk about time and how it's stretchy um and the past is present and the present is past and uh, i mean and the future is now and yeah i think there's something to that but i'm still trying to be able to have you as a regular person trying to understand telepathy clairvoyance precognition uh, to understand it in a way that you can conceptualize not saying yeah hey mark it's quantum physics it's it's non-locality and you're saying well what's the, uh, what, what are you talking about non-locality is means it's faster than the speed of light the, the way the two things interact whatever they are but the speed of light is pretty fast and so i'm i i like try to think about the meaningful coincidence thing and the telepathic parts of them uh in a following way i'd like to be able to tell you that if that's all right please do well, it, it, start, it starts with a metaphor. You know, indigenous cultures tell a lot of stories. Mm -hmm. And uh, Western uh, anthropologists say these are just stories. But mm -hmm. they're the way in which the culture transmits information. It's, yeah. it's knowledge in those. Mm -hmm. And here's a, what I think is a, a modern day uh, transformative informational uh, e event or a series of events that has been well documented you can see it on youtube uh it's, you can see it referred to in my book this meaningful coincidence thing uh and it's in the section about uh really six hard to understand coincidences mm -hmm. and it's the story of the two lauras mm -hmm. that happened you know that story no no i'm listening well i, I it's it's a uh it's it took place in jolly old england uh and, and that's that's why it's uh fun to be able to tell you that uh there there it involves a a girl named starts with a girl named laura buxton um who who was uh who who in june in 2001 of june 2001 was 10 years old uh in staffordshire england and she was attending her grandparents' uh, golden wedding anniversary. Mm -hmm. And she was in need of a friend, and of, of a friend. She didn't have a friend, she wanted one. Her grandfather thought she could find one for herself by writing her address on a label with the message that said, please return to Laura Buxton. Okay. And they had some helium balloons as part of the celebration. So mm -hmm. attach that that tag to the helium 
helium balloon yeah. and set it off. Yeah. Now, one of the drivers of this was a need that Laura had for a friend, but also the love her grandfather had for Laura uh, that wanted her to have somebody to be able to be connected with. Hmm. So off goes this balloon. Then uh, a farmer in Milton, Lyborn, Wiltshire, <laughs> about a, I love telling these names to you. I don't know where they are, but you know them. Yeah, I totally. Well, <laughs> about 140 miles away, pulled the balloon out of the hedge that separated his pastures from the neighbor's pasture. He noticed the name Laura Buxton, and since this was the name of his neighbor's daughter, yeah, wow. he yeah. brought the balloon to her. The Laura Buxton from Milton Liveborn was also 10 years old, then wrote back to the Laura of Staffordshire. And the parents got them together because the coincidence was so interesting. Yeah. That's and when they met, they were both wearing similar clothes, Whoa. discovered that they had three similar pets, including a three-year-old black <laughs> Labrador. Wow. And, and you can see like 10 years later, the girls had become friends. They, I think they went to the same college together. So it actually did happen. Wow. So how do I explain that? And why is that related to um, how telepathy and more might work? That's what I'm about to go. Yeah. Okay. So the grandfather let the, just, I'm going to make a rectangle like this, very <laughs> simple thing. So the grandfather let the balloon go up into the sky. The balloon traveled 140 miles, came down where the other Laura was, yeah. and the other Laura then contacted the first Laura. Sure. Okay. So instead of just rectangles, think of balloons that each of the Lauras had connected to them in the psychosphere. Now, mm -hmm. the psychosphere, I'm saying, is our mental atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Rather than talking about quantum fields, and there may be something to quantum fields, yeah. and rather than talking uh, about other kinds of fields uh, mm -hmm. that may be there, this is a kind of more primitive field, but it's still a field of energy and information. <clears throat> Uh, it's it, in that field or in that place, when people look up, maybe it is up, uh, yeah. that, that these balloons on top of, uh, that I'm connecting with each Laura to, these balloons, I'm saying, are our higher selves. Yeah, yeah. And these higher selves are floating around in the psychosphere. I mean, it's not really a rigid rectangle it's just an approximation and they're floating around in in the ebbs and tides and movements and all the stuff that's going on in there because a lot of stuff going on but the thought goes up from grandfather and laura to her the first laura's mm -hmm. higher self and somehow that connects up to a, another higher self with which the first higher self is resonating yeah. they're resonating together this resonance as you know from music and harmony and, and harmonics is what makes things feel good what makes music sound good so i think we can resonate in some form yet to be determined i have some ideas about that yeah. To create a connection through which information is is passed, energy and information pass, and that that higher one, that higher that hitting the second Laura came down to her through the friend of the neighbor next door, and then Laura, the first, second Laura contacted the first Laura. And I think that's the way we make connections happen with people through telepathy was a, a friend of mine said, I really miss my boyfriend. I really miss my boyfriend. We haven't been together for months and maybe a year. And she said she sent out smoke signals to him. Yeah. And these smoke signals, I think, followed this pathway I just described. And he, after she did a bunch of those, contacted her and they're living together again. Oh, wow. Okay. 
Fascinating. I like that vibration resonance. That's a really good explanation. I just want to share, kind of running out of time now, I just want to share one of my other meaningful coincidences, a bit similar to what you just told us, is that I, I run a record label and do this TV show. Okay, I started the record label back in 2004. Then around about 2009, 10, I started getting other bands on board to release their music. And I, I found this really good band called The Boy From Space and signed them because I really liked them and they had a good energy about them. So they came on the label, really got on well with them. And then I needed some more help with the label because we were getting, you know, getting more acts on, getting more business. I needed someone else to come on board. So then this uh, this person called Guy from the band that volunteered to help with the label. Uh, now Guy is my co-presenter on the show as well. And uh, so we were working together for, for quite a long time. And then we were at a, at a party somewhere, a networking thing in London. And we we found out we both had the same same birthday. And then we found out we were both actually born on the same day. We have the same actual birthday. And we both got three kids. We both had jobs for the civil service at the time. And our lives were like weird in tandem parallel to each other and we end up getting together and now we're doing this tv show together it's just uh yeah amazing i think uh yeah i i like the same day birthdays it's easy to get the the same date birthdays easier yeah 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 but the same day uh, was I... he the same day was he born in england too yeah absolutely yeah okay. and uh yeah so it's, it's yeah i had one of those with the Italian translator of my first book mm. had the same birthday as you did yeah. um, with the guy who, who with whom I composed some songs uh, mm -hmm. based on my first book. So we have a CD of okay. coincidence songs that oh, wow. uh, that we want to. Uh, and so he he's had that kind of connection. They were both like deeply into my book. One from the music, one from the translation perspective. Well, that's what you have is even better because the two of you have become uh, like twins. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Where where that all those similarities mm -hmm. make it feel like it's meant to be for the two of you to be together. Yeah, absolutely, and it is, and it's you know it's paying dividends now. We're doing this show together and discussing these subjects as well which is which is brilliant That's but, wonderful. Know, at the end of the day he was just some person called guy who was on my label and liked what he was doing and yeah we just we were drawn together somehow but yeah and he liked what you were doing i mean that yeah. same thing i'm talking about the resonance thing mm -hmm. liking is familiar resonance and one way to think about it so he there was something he saw felt experienced more like that was very very compatible with his energy field and his i think um, basic pattern of resonance himself absolutely okay well thank you very much for your time how can people find out more about you and buy your book more importantly well thank you uh you can you can buy meaningful coincidences how and why serendipity and synchronicity happen at any book place i encourage you to buy it at your local bookstore uh, encourage both local bookstores and you can take the weird coincidence survey on the coincider.com a coincider 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 is who's inside with me or inside with the rest of us but coin cider um is a person who experiences uh coincidences and, or a lot of them and you do so you're a coincider join the group there's there's <laughs> more people out there so coincider.com you get to my website and uh, you'll be able to buy the book from there or any place you want to uh, yeah. i also also have a psychology today blog and uh podcast myself excellent all right thank you very much bernard it's been great having you on all thank best. you very much pleasure fantastic thank you sir that was excellent i really enjoyed that so thank you you're welcome i i like your uh i, I like your birthday guy <laughs> yes. I mean, I like I like hearing ones I don't hear too often, and uh, this is the second time I've heard that story. Wow. Uh, I... It's